Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I'm making a heavy duty set of bookends, a sort of a industrial look, and they're just going to go in the shop because my wife probably will not let me put them in the house. I ordered some, I ordered some bookends a while back that had a hand on them, fingers and a thumb and a hand. <laughs> they were just cheap bookends that I needed to keep some of my welding books on up in my office and uh, she wouldn't hear of it. She sent them back and got me some regular standard bookends but they don't work very good so <laughs> I'm gonna make some. So I'm making these bookends I'm gonna use some socket weld fittings for the industrial look. Some black iron pipe schedule 40 inch and a quarter pipe and some A36 plate, half inch thick, left over from a big project I did several months ago, actually about a year ago now. You can see the pieces on the end of this thing here. This is some type of a load balancer lifting device I did about a year ago, and so I had these pieces left over. They're marked A36 material on them, and they're, they were CNC plasma cut by an outfit in Chattanooga. So I've got them left over, don't know what to do with them, so I figured might as well make some bookends. So I got to make some marks to plasma cut them kind of sort of in half, not exactly in half. And this little square comes in super handy, stands up by itself. You can see it at weldmonger.com. It's called a square. So because I'm going to do the socket welds and I'm going to TIG weld them, I got to clean all that coating off that pipe and clean these socket weld fittings also so the TIG welds go in okay. And I'm going to cut these with a the Miller Spectrum. 625 extreme plasma cutter a little tiny thing but it is powerful and it does a really good job I'm going uh, real time here I'm not speeding anything up just to kind of show you the actual length of time it takes this is cutting half inch a36 steel and it's not having a problem doing it at all except for me shaking a little bit right <laughs> but it makes a nice clean cut. It cuts as good as I can anyway, put it that way. Very little slag, very little dross on there, knocks right off too. And so I'll smooth it off a little grinder a little bit, knock the dross off with a piece of steel, comes right off. And that's what you want. So I'll clean these up a little bit and then we'll go back to the socket welds. Socket weld codes like B31.1 for uh, pressure piping or power plants require a gap, approximately 1 16th gap. And that's to keep it from uh, building up too much stress. You've got to give it a little bit of area to shrink. When you weld a couple of passes on a weld like this, if it doesn't have any room to, to shrink and move, it leaves a lot of stress in it and it can cause failures later on down the line. Also, just to get it straight. If you got a little bit of a crooked cut and you bottom it out in there and put a tack on it, you can't wiggle it at all. You can't get it straight. So leaving a 1 16th gap lets you bump it around and get it straight. I'm getting tacks 180 degrees from one another here. And then I'll get some tacks on the, uh, on the other sides. And I am field testing a, a cup here. I'll let you know what it is and all about it later on. But I haven't got much time on it yet. So... It's one of the. It's a Pyrex cup with a couple of diffusers in there. So far, so good. That's all I can say. All right, using a combination of a level or a square, you can get something like this square. You got to bump it around, check it, recheck it, and then get your tacks on it. And then sometimes heat up a tack to move it around if it's off a little bit. But you get typically you want to get four tacks, 90 degrees apart. And I'm leaving these pieces long just to uh, the pipe long just so I can handle it easier and then I'll cut it after it's welded. So we'll, the arc shots are coming here. Don't worry about it. I don't want to show it. I'm just like I said I'm field testing this cup so I'm not really worried about getting arc shots on what I'm doing right here but we'll get those in just a minute. I do want you to pay attention though. You can come at it from a different angle from the top like this. And I've got a TIG finger XL on two fingers here and it's letting me slide all the way around that thing and it worked out pretty well and the cup is working pretty well okay so here in just a minute we're gonna start walking the cup a little bit and getting some decent arc shots here and maybe something that's a little bit more instructional again this is about building bookends but I thought well why not show something here socket welds don't even need anything 
it's like this uh, especially to to hold the the half inch plate together but i thought it would look cool and give something to talk about and make some more interesting video so first pass going in like this just wiggling it just a little bit just barely side to side and that looks something like that now we'll come the other direction now get a little bit better angle on it so we can film something here and just a little bit of wiggling and that you can you can you can see right here not a lot of wiggling not a lot of side to side oscillation but just a little bit just enough to keep the torch moving keeping that 332nd wire in the puddle just a little bit of pressure on it putting the first pass in this socket weld like this socket welds typically require more than one pass in fact a lot of codes specify no single pass socket welds just for the sake of you know a little bit of insurance two passes very unlikely to leak that way less likely than one pass you gotta set your electrode out the right distance and get your arc length about right and then keep your rod kinda of pushed in a little bit of pressure on the puddle but this is about 120 amps 332nd electrode 332nd ER 70s2 filler wire and that's fairly typical fairly typical of uh, a job like this for socket welds it's only about a uh, the, the wall thickness on the pipes probably only about a hundred and sixty thousandths 150 to 160 thousand something like that so you know 120 amps right down the pike that's the first pass and we're going to come over that with a second pass using a 1 8 wire and hopefully come all the way out to the shoulder and again I'm using this little TIG 175 square wave from Lincoln at about 120 amps and I am using a foot pedal today honestly a job like this is almost better without a foot pedal either with just a torch trigger or just an air-cooled scratch start rig because you could go all the way around it without stopping that way with your foot on a foot pedal very difficult to bunny hop all the way around the, the uh, whatever kind of vice you're in. And typically these are done, would be done in a field or in a fab shop on a rigid pipe vice where you could kind of walk around it. But um, I've got my foot on a foot pedal so I'm having to stop about halfway around and plus I'm filming it so I'm having to stop even more often than that. But this is, this is kind of what it looks like when you get on a good run. You can do this all the way around it if you don't have to worry about a foot pedal which actually makes it look nicer in the, at the end. There's lots of ways to hold the torch. So I've seen some guys go a whole lot faster than this with a whole lot more arm movement, but um, this is what I'm doing today. It's been about 25 or 30 years since I've done any of these socket welds in production, so I'm kind of having to shake the rust off a little bit. No excuses, but it is what it is. I can kind of feel myself getting a little bit more comfortable even after the you know even after five or ten minutes of this so maybe it'll come back to me all right well socket welds are done that should look okay for bookends and now it's time to put some marks on this thing they're gonna be pretty short little nipples sticking out of each each end of the fitting and I'm going to try to mark it with this wide base square here. You can get a mark halfway around a piece of pipe like this with this square, which if you're using a, a porta band or something to cut it, oftentimes that's really all the mark you need. And once you get halfway through it, you can kind of just keep going straight. Other way to mark it would obviously be a wrap around. Wrap around is just a pipe fitter's way of marking round stuff like this. If you don't have a wrap around, you can use some duct tape back back to back or anything like that and, and get a round mark around it. But the, actually the square works pretty darn good for transferring the mark. And then I'll cut these with a four and a half inch grinder and a cutting wheel. I won't make you watch all that. But we get all those cut up. Next thing to do is tack these half inch pieces that we plasma cut, tack them at 90 degrees using the square to kind of square them up in a couple little small magnets and we'll get some tacks on there and that's kind of what it's going to look like when we're done but you're going to have to stay tuned for the next part because I didn't have time to finish it today 
All right, well, thanks for watching as always. I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button if you like this sort of thing. Visit the store by clicking the button or go to weldmonger.com and check out the wide base square, take fingers, stubby kits, etc. See you next time.